last December, hundreds of scientists met in Montreal and read their papers to each other. Naturally, the entire world printed what they had to say. Fortunately for me, the Los Angeles Times carried it daily. I must confess, everyone really fired me. But one in particular interested me. And this scientist read a paper on the sperm. He said the sperm remains as much a mystery today as it was when man first became curious about its nature. And then he made this little statement. The sperm somehow easily passes through the surface of an egg, although the outside of the egg has no holes in it, either before or after fertilization. Well, that fired me. On the morning of the 19th of February, I was lying in bed quite early, thinking of this strange mystery of the sperm and wondering all about it. And suddenly I felt myself detached from this body. I was not in my room, but I was in a room, and the room was sealed. There was no entrance, no exit, just a sealed room. But as I entered it, it became alive, it became animated. Then I thought of my bed, my body, and in one moment I am back on my bed. I thought of another detachment. I'm in an entirely different room, but it's also sealed. How I got in, I do not know other, but I simply imagined myself away from my body. I did not single out the room. The room was completely sealed. No entrance, no exit. Then I thought, there are these unnumbered states of consciousness. You can't number them. You can liken each state to an egg. And every state remains just like the egg until fertilized. And the presence that fertilizes the egg is simply our consciousness. We must be in it to activate it, to animate it. You could this very moment single out any state and by the use of your imagination, imagine that you're in it. You'll be in it. Think this very moment of your living room or any room in your house. Take an object, a familiar object in your room and bring it as close as you can. If it's really here, well then you can't be here in this room. As you become intense about it, concentrated on it, you are really where you are imagining yourself to be. For man being all imagination, he must be where he is in imagination. But what have I done then? I've fertilized it. I've actually made it real. And in a way that I do not know, I'm going to go there. But now you will say, naturally, I'm going to go there today. It's my home. I use that only to illustrate a point. You could take any place, no matter where it is, any part of the world. If you did the same thing to it that you would now do to your home, you will find yourself compelled to move across a bridge of incident leading up to the fulfillment of that state. You don't devise the means, but there's so many little facets to this wonderful art of imagining. But you know exactly what you want, occupy it. I find one of the great fallacies of the world is perpetual construction, deferred occupancy. We know what we want, but we leave it out there and hope that the passing of time will make it. They won't do it. I have to occupy it. I make there, here. I make then, now. And dwell in it just as though it were true. And if I dwell in it just as though it's true, though one second later, the phone rings and breaks the spell, or someone calls me, or I wake from it, I have fertilized it. You go into the state and you fertilize it. I may not recognize my harvest when it comes in new season. It'll come. It may not come tonight. It may not come tomorrow. But it will come because I fertilized it. I went into a state, occupied it, and the whole thing becomes fertilized. But every egg has its own appointed hour. And it ripens and it will flower. If to me it seemed long, then I must wait. For it is sure, 
and it will not be late. These infinite states of the world are waiting for occupancy, waiting to be fertilized by us.